Welcome to Coffee Talk from the Ground Up, an ECS podcast, where we strive to provide a more personable way to communicate with employees. I'm Steve Goslin, but you can call me Goose, and I'm part of our senior leadership team, and I'm joined here by Julie Smith, who is part of the marketing communications team and our resident Chocoholic. Say hi, Julie. Thanks, Steve. Hey, everyone. I'm glad you're joining us today. So, Steve, what are we doing here? Great question, Julie. One of the struggles with a company our size is getting a message to the masses without it being diluted along the way. From projects and people to services and career insight, we hope this podcast helps provide an avenue to communicate the stories that are worth sharing. It's to learn about our culture and feel more connected and to have some fun along the way. So what you're saying is, we hope this podcast is educational, entertaining, and encouraging. With practical advice, you can apply directly to your work and life. Well said, Julie, and that's why you're in marketing. (laughs) So grab a cup and settle in. Our attorney makes us say this. This podcast is for entertainment and informational purposes only. Nothing herein shall be construed as providing professional engineering services or used to establish the standard of care. This podcast and the comments contained therein represent only the personal views of the participants and do not reflect those of ECS. While we make every effort to ensure that the information we are sharing is accurate, we welcome any comments, suggestions, or correction of errors. Safety is incredibly important at ECS, so we start every meeting with a safety minute. Today's safety minute is about driving safety. The days are getting noticeably shorter and our typically work day now starts at or before daybreak. So two things. One, many kids are out walking to school or waiting for the bus before daybreak. Take your time. Go slow in neighborhoods and school zones. Keep an eye out for young folks on the side of the road. Also, have sunglasses handy. As the sun rises slow in the sky, the intense sunlight will blind you first thing in the morning if you aren't wearing sunglasses. Uh, That's happened to me many times. Always keep sunglasses handy while driving. And as always, be sure that your phone is in a secure location and hit play before moving your car so that you remain hands-free and do not drive distracted. Welcome to Coffee Talk from the Ground Up, an ECS podcast where we strive to provide a more personal way to communicate with employees. I'm Steve Gosselin, and here with me is Julie Smith, my co-host, and today we're going to be talking about, wait, what, me? Come on, Julie. That's right, Steve, and it's day one, and I'm already keeping you on your toes. Today's going to be a little bit about me and a lot more about you. For this first episode, we want our listeners to get to know who it is they're hearing from. You okay with that? All right, Julie, I see what you I see what you're doing here and I'm up for the challenge. So uh, let's go. All right. So first things first, Steve, what are you drinking this morning? And is it your normal or are you drinking something special? Well, of course, I do. You'd ask that question. So uh, I'm drinking my Quad Grande Americano. That's right. Four shots of espresso from Starbucks. And then I usually finish it off with uh, a cafe, a special medium dark roast uh, made by Community Coffee, which is a South Louisiana uh, coffee company. Awesome. Well, as most of you know, Steve is principal geologist and executive vice president for ECS. He joined our team in 1996 and has had several different roles through the years. He's based in Charlotte, and when he's not in this office, you can find this Aggie on the golf course or with his wife, Chase, and his grandkids. So, Steve, thanks for allowing us to steal the name Coffee Talk for this podcast. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about how the original Coffee Talk started and what that purpose was? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, So, uh, actually, it started a little over a year ago, uh, not long after uh, Tony took over uh, as CEO of the company. Uh, He and I uh, had a long conversation about uh, communication, leadership, management, uh, how to get the word out. And uh, it was really Tony's idea. He he wanted to have some sort of monthly call uh, to get uh, information out to the folks. Um, It's really it it was a way to uh, share information, 
uh, and and the purpose really was to uh, uh, create a dialogue so learning uh, could be shared amongst the leadership of the company. So uh, we uh, we decided to call it Coffee Talk. Typically, um, the topics are about things that uh, are uh, challenging or important to the company. And to, it, for instance, tomorrow we're going to be talking about what is employee engagement. Uh, we uh, we grab uh, some articles from uh, periodicals, magazines, business journals, uh, send them out to the group as a way to prepare, uh, kind of set the context of the call and talk about what some of the challenges are we're facing in relation to the subject. And then uh, I, I like to uh, assemble what I call an all-star cast of experts, but really it's folks are across the company. Uh, that are in leadership positions that can share stories about uh, what the topic is uh, uh, that that week or that month. Um, it's uh, it's really been received well. Uh, folks get a lot out of it. Uh, when we first started, it got off to kind of a slow start, but uh, um, now, I mean, we've got people volunteering all the time to talk and people jumping in during the call. So uh, it really is uh, meeting our mission of uh, sharing uh, uh, dialogue and learning across uh, the leadership of the company. Yeah. So if you're not familiar, we stole the name Coffee Talk from that monthly call. Um, and after listening to just a few episodes, we felt the message was important enough to share with our employees and build upon it for a larger audience. So that's how we got here today. All right, Steve, now I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Uh, okay. Let's give it a <laughs> shot. All right. What's your favorite food? Well, I'll eat almost anything, but uh, I, if I had to choose, I'd say Mexican. Yeah, I would agree. There, there's a, a number of queso and guac that we have shared together over the years. <laughs> what is your favorite book or author? Uh, well, uh, the last book I read um, was Capitalism in America by Alan Greenspan. Boy, favorite book? Uh, <laughs> I, I'd, I'd say... Uh, now, there's a lot of business manuals I read, but uh, one of my favorite uh, kind of leadership business manuals is True Professionalism by uh, David Meister. I, I found that uh, really, uh, uh, really a valuable book. Awesome. Favorite movie? Coal Miner's Daughter. Uh, favorite sport or hobby? Uh, college football is my favorite sport. Uh, I've re really enjoyed the pageantry, the tradition, uh, just the, the sheer passion of the sport. Uh, and my favorite hobby is fishing, even though I know I do play a lot of golf. Uh, if I had to choose anything, I'd be uh, fishing right now. And best vacation spot? Uh, best vacation spot uh, is probably uh, fishing in South Louisiana with my fishing buddies. Nice. All right. So now that we know a little bit more about you, uh, let's talk more about your experience at ECS and your career journey. So first question, what's your ECS story? <laughs> okay. Uh, let me, uh, let me, let me spin up the memory banks here. Uh, so this is going back to late 1995, early 1996. Uh, Steve Neese, Brian Moss, and I were uh, working with law engineering, uh, along with many other folks that ultimately came to ECS. Uh, and uh, we were uh, becoming more and more disenchanted with the direction of the company and some of the financial challenges they were facing. Um, and uh, as it turns out, uh, inside of law engineering, some of the uh, major leadership and management of the company uh, not only had the same feelings, but they were in the process of trying to go out and form their own company. Um, we found out about that and actually got invited to a uh, clandestine meeting of law engineering leadership about forming this company. Um, after the meeting, uh, Steve and Brian and I were driving back home. We were talking about the meeting and what our feelings were about it. And we felt like um, they didn't really have a clear direction and, and they were going to be underfunded. And we didn't want to start out like that. Um, so we actually talked about forming our own firm. And during the conversation, Steve Neese mentioned, you know, there's there's one more thing we need to consider. Uh, there's this guy I've been talking to, uh, Henry Lucas, and he's with ECS. Um, he's actually offered me a job. Uh, I've turned him down once, but he said, I think that's really a viable alternative. And he explained to us about uh, not only Henry and ECS, but uh, 
kind of the company's uh, feeling about entrepreneurism and how quickly they were growing and, uh, um, and, and opening new offices. So he said, uh, let me call Henry and get something set up. And we all agreed. Well, you know, Henry, he's, uh, um, he, he's very rapid, very fast on the draw. And uh, so uh, we actually had dinner with Henry on Tuesday evening and pretty much consummated the deal. Um, the next day, we went to lunch with our wives uh, to talk about the decision, making sure that everybody was on board and everybody agreed and talk about, you know, what some of the potential problems might be. Um, Steve called Henry on Thursday and said we were ready to go. Our offer letter showed up at our houses via FedEx Saturday morning. Um, we signed them over the weekend. Uh, uh, and sent them back to Henry and resigned uh, Monday morning. So in uh, in about 10 days, uh, we went from uh, meeting with uh, leadership at law about forming our own company to resigning and coming to work for Henry. Wow. So obviously you've, you've been here um, a while and you've had a variety of different roles. Can you kind of talk about your uh, leadership, moving along the leadership ranks a little bit? Yeah, you bet. Uh, Steve and I opened up uh, in Greensboro early March 1996. I started out as a principal geologist working in the uh, environmental group there, along with uh, Brian Moss, Denise Poulos, uh, and a few others. Um, we, uh, we quickly started grabbing market share and growing the office. And about a little over a year in, I'd say almost 18 months in, uh, we decided we needed a full-time business development person. Uh, and um, so I was asked and uh, actually kind of uh, tentatively agreed, uh, but my agreement uh, to Steve was I wanted my old job back in a year because I, I wasn't really excited about it. Uh, but after about six months in, uh, realizing uh, the challenge, the commitment it took to do full-time business development, uh, really how hard it was, uh, uh, the professionalism of uh, of the position, uh, the things I was learning, uh, it it was a it was a great uh, transition and uh, really a good position in my career. So I went back to Steve and I said, you know, um, this is a little bit more gratifying than I thought it was going to be. I'll go ahead and give it a, a try. And he kind of laughed and he said, I, I figured that would happen. And uh, and I did that, uh, I'd say, for almost six years. I was full, full-time full business development um, and uh, worked along with some of the other business developers in the company, uh, did a lot of traveling, and, uh, and really, uh, it, was a, it was really valuable in my career. Uh, 2003, I took over uh, branch management of Greensboro as we were rolling out and starting to form subsidiaries and subsidiary presidents. So Steve Neese got promoted up. I moved into that role. And then uh, in January of 2005, I moved to Charlotte as branch manager. And uh, that that was a great move. I mean, not only moving to Charlotte, but the opportunity down here. And then a few years later, 2008, 2009 timeframe, uh, the, uh, the regional management uh, it was was taken hold. The subsidiaries were taken hold, and uh, uh, ECS Carolinas at the time was large enough to break up into uh, regions inside the subsidiary. And so originally, I was given the Western region. Um, then the Great Recession came along, and we kind of tightened everything back up. And then 2010 timeframe, we were starting to come out of the Great Recession, and. Uh, uh, I was uh, I decided uh, along with Steve and Waleed to uh, take over what we considered uh, the southern region of ECS Carolinas, which is all South Carolina and Western North Carolina, including Charlotte. Um, a few years later, 2013, I took over a subsidiary president of ECS Carolinas. A few years later, we merged with ECS Southeast and formed ECS Southeast, which was essentially the size that it is now. And then uh, a little over a year ago, um, I stepped out of the way to let Derek, Paul, Ben, Eric, Raul, and others uh, take over uh, and manage uh, ECS Southeast. And I'm in my new role as Executive Vice President. I'm supporting ECS Southeast. Uh, supporting Grant Walker in national accounts, 
uh, Grant and I are also working together on uh, uh, leadership and management, uh, leading the uh, master's in leadership program um, and uh, helping Tony out as well with uh, some uh, executive leadership uh, positions as well, too. So um, that's uh, that's kind of a in a nutshell, my uh, my career here at ECS. So a lot of our listeners are interested in learning more about leadership. What are a few simple things our listeners can do every day to help grow in their leadership? Wow, uh, good question. Um, so you know, I think the main thing is uh, focusing on yourself, focusing on your strengths, uh, and growing personally and professionally each and every day. Uh, always striving to learn, learn more. Um, I, I know that uh, I, I've always immersed myself in books, periodicals, uh, uh, things like that, plus taking a lot of courses as well, too. So never stop learning. Never think you've arrived. Never think that, uh, you know, you've got it all figured out. Uh, really, what happens is you reach a series of plateaus in your life and you've got to continue to push yourself to strive and break through. Um, the other thing, you got to surround yourself with great people. And, you know, I mentioned earlier uh, working, certainly working with Steve Neese, Brian Moss, some of the folks in, in Greensboro uh was great experience and and helped in in my journey and and certainly helped in management leadership and then uh the same thing in charlotte uh getting to work with uh you know derek when i first came down here uh hiring paul blake uh working with john lair uh working with several others i mean that that was uh Really, really great experience. Uh, then um, as I moved up to, uh, I guess, senior leadership and ECS Southeast president, um, surrounded myself with uh, Beth, Paul, Derek, Ben, Eric, you know, many others getting to work with uh, uh, Bob Gehring along the way, working closely with Raul. Uh, you know, this just really got to surround yourself with great people. Um, and then uh, communication uh, is really important. And, you know, we talk a lot about that and why that's why we're doing this podcast and why we do the monthly t- coffee talks. But uh, uh, you really do have to dig in and understand uh, the needs and the concerns of your folks. Uh, you, you, you've got to understand um, you know, what it is they want to achieve, how they want to grow, uh, and, you know, what, what some of their challenges are. Uh, so you, you pull all that together and uh, in creating a vision, a direction, and each and every day, uh, you know, waking up with a purpose, uh, knowing that, you know, I'm excited about coming to work, that I'm going to win that day, um, and, uh, and just being ready to meet the challenge and take on each and every challenge that comes along every day, making quick decisions, making sure you're moving the needle, you know, making sure that uh, you're progressing each day. You know, talking about those challenges and the importance of communication and the great people that you work with, I know as, as someone who's worked under your leadership, I know firsthand that work-life balance is extremely important to you. Can you share, what, what does that mean to you? I mean, you've been doing it since before it was a uh, really cool or trendy. So can you, can you share what does work-life balance mean to you? And, you know, how has your family contributed to this kind of becoming part of your leadership style? Yeah. Th- thanks. Thanks for those kind words. And, uh, um, you know, I, I'd say first and foremost, uh, yeah, I learned uh, work-life balance, uh, partnership, uh, and trust from my wife, Karen. Um, you know, she grew up in a family where her dad was uh, a committed professional and working hard every day, and she saw uh, not only how he took care of his family, but how hard he worked, and this guy was traveling all around the world. So she saw that. Um, Karen's a geologist as well. She's a professional, and uh, she always understood that um, that that I that I was committed to the company, to work, uh, to to my folks, and that I needed to spend time away from home and traveling and doing my job. But I also knew that the most important thing in my life was my family, was Karen and Greg and Danielle, and you know now it's my extended family, including my grandchildren. Uh, so you know I I've always had a clear sense of that. 
Karen always supported that, uh, and you know I kept that as the number one priority. Um, so, so I really think it all starts with trust, and that is for for my folks and the people I work with. You know, I trust them. I trust that they're responsible. I trust they know what their job is. Uh, I trust that uh, they know they they know what needs to get done, and uh, and and I know that everybody works hard. Uh, I, I really believe that deep down and that, that all of our folks are working hard. So, you know, I ask for people to get their job done, commitment to work hard at work. But at the same time, I wanted to make sure that they had every means of communication to stay in touch with their family during the day, whether it was they needed a phone, an iPad, a computer, uh, you know, access to ways to communicate and that they had the freedom at any time that if they needed to be home with their family or their kids or to help out or support that they felt okay to ask to talk about it um to that 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 wasn't going to be held against them um that we have pto that we have uh, sick leave that we have great benefits that they could use to their advantage you know and there's laws out there like the family medical leave act and things like that but i would always spend time talking with folks and making sure that not only were they working hard but find out about their wife their kids their dog what was going on at home and that they had that freedom to be able to spend time with their family and uh, and enjoy themselves and enjoy their time with their family too. Yeah. So Steve, you've been here since 1996. I'm sure there have been a lot of memorable moments throughout the years. So besides that time when I may have stabbed you with a fork when you tried to eat my dessert, what's been some of your funniest or your favorite memories along the way? Oh man, I, I, you know, there, there's so many, uh, great memories that I cherish and, and, you know, a lot of it has to do with, uh, our folks and their successes. You know, I just love Hal outs every week reading about, you know, the things that people are doing, uh, the things they're accomplishment, accomplishing the compliments they're getting from our clients. Uh, I, I I love seeing things with their family and new kids and the the, the community giving back to the community and and things like that. So there's just so many. I, I, I there, there's really not one best or favorite moment. Um, I, I, there's just so many things that I enjoy. I mean, I can just think of all the major projects that we won and the euphoria and the excitement about about that. But even, you know, some of the folks we've hired, some of the things they've done, it's just that there's there's so many that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to uh, say there's one best because there's there's too many. But but that's a great question. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're getting to my favorite part. We're going to call this section our listeners want to know. So how would Steve Goslin answer the question, what does ECS do? Oh, I, I get I get asked that a lot. And, and usually it comes up in conversation when people find out I'm a geologist or Karen's a geologist. They're like, really? Like, what do you do? And, you know, I tell them, you know, I work with an engineering consulting firm and we, you know, you give them the 30 second uh, commercial, you know, the elevator speech and we're geotechnical, environmental and stuff like that. And they kind of look at me like, what is all that? And so I, I try to pull it, boil it down a couple of different ways um, and not to offend any geotechnical engineers out there. But typically what I do is I tell folks, I drill holes in the ground and tell you what kind of dirt you have. And they're like, what? I said, yeah, either the physical characteristics of the soil or the chemical characteristics of the soil. And they're like, oh, OK. And I said, essentially what we do is we observe, test and report in all aspects of all the work that we do. We observe what's going on. You know, we'll collect some samples sometimes. We test and then we report. That's essentially what we do. Awesome. All right. How many messages are in your inbox right now and how do you manage your email? Oh, wow. Uh, and I know there's uh, several folks uh, that were at this manager's meeting, and I'd say it was at least, oh man, it's probably 15 years ago. It was in the mid 2000s, and there was a guy uh, that did a quick 20, 30 minute seminar on kind of managing stuff. And I tried, you know, you've seen me, you know, I'm borderline OCD, and I got things organized, uh, not quite as to the degree that Beth is, and everything's color coordinated, but. Uh, I, I try to keep things organized, but one of the things I always 
chat would challenge me was email. I mean, I would have thousands of emails in my inbox and always trying to go back and find things. And this guy talked about setting up files, important things that you needed maybe later or to keep you stick in the files. Um, you would start at the top. Um, you would knock emails out as they come along and then you would uh, delete things that weren't important. Uh, and right now, I'd say I might have eight email eight, eight emails in my inbox that have to be uh, responded to. Wow, that's impressive. I hope I hope to uh, get to that level soon. <laughs> um, all right, Steve. In one word, how would you describe yourself? I'd say uh, trusting. All right, we've reached the end. We have one final question. You ready? Sure. All right, here it goes. What fills your cup or what brings you joy? I'd say, you know, really family brings me joy. Uh, spending time with Karen, you know, pretty much anywhere. Uh, and then uh, in particularly uh, my grandchildren. Uh, I hope uh, everybody on the call someday gets to have grandchildren and gets to experience that joy, that level of joy. Um, it, it, it's really hard to describe. I remember uh, my friends as they were becoming grandfathers or grandmothers and, and trying to describe it, and you can't put it in the words. It certainly is a feeling. Uh, but, uh, you know, the moment I became a grandfather, and I've been a grandfather now almost seven years, uh, it, it, it's it's pr it's pretty incredible thing. So, uh, you know, it's family, you know, my relationship with Karen and my grandchildren. Awesome. Well, Steve, you made it. You did great. Uh, thanks so much for sharing with us today. We're extremely excited to have you leading us through this journey that we're calling Coffee Talk. And I've enjoyed playing host today, but graciously handing, handing the reins back over to you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Julie. Uh, you made it easy and did a great job. I, I really appreciate it. I look forward to engaging in conversations and connecting with our guests and listeners in our own upcoming episodes. So thanks again. I really appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Coffee Talk from the ground up. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have an idea on future topics, guests, or are up for a round of call, you can call me, text me, email me, just, just get in touch with me and I'll get it to Julie and uh, we'll get it set up. And for those of you that don't want to play golf and you may hate talking on the phone, that's okay. You can send us an email at ecsmarketing at ecslimited.com. Be sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. Thanks, Julie. Here's to having a great day. <laughs>